I am Lakshmi from our YouTube channel which is RGL Home Healthcare. We are trying to present a few videos in front of you which will be of great use to you so as to give an effective nursing care to your family members and maybe even to you yourself. To begin with, we are starting with one of the most important medical treatment measure that we give to those patients who have diabetes which is insulin administration. World over the number of people who have diabetes is increasing and one of the major treatment modality is definitely insulin administration. Insulin is the hormone that will be maintaining the blood sugar levels to normal. Different types of insulin are available in the market and your doctor will be prescribing those insulins according to the glycemic condition or your own blood sugar levels. There is rapid acting insulin, there is short acting insulin, there is So rapid acting insulin it begins its effect by around 15 to 30 minutes and the peak effect will be obtained within two hours and the effect of the same will be there in the blood for nearly four hours. Beyond that, this kind of insulin will not be effective in maintaining blood sugar levels to normal. And again, the amount of this insulin that your body requires again depends on your In short acting insulin, the time taken to begin with the effect of insulin will be a little more high. It will take at least 30 minutes to 1 hour to begin with the effect and the peak effect will be obtained by around 4 hours and the effect will be there in the blood for nearly 6 to 8 hours and usually uh, people are started with uh, this short acting insulin and it's one of the most commonly used insulin. Then comes intermediate acting insulin. In intermediate acting insulin, the insulin will begin to effect nearly 4 hours after injection and the peak action will be around 8 to 12 hours and by around 12, after 12 hours the action will be definitely receding and beyond 18 hours usually now let's see where can injections, the subcutaneous injections be given. It's very easy to uh, give as well as to remember. The upper arms, abdomen, buttocks, thighs and even shoulder blades may be used to give subcutaneous injections. So the side that you take, if you are a fat person, or if you are a moderately built person, it's very easy by pinching the skin or by bunching the skin up with the tissue below will give you an access to subcutaneous space into which at a 90 degree angle, let me repeat, at a 90 degree angle to the skin, the injection can be very easily deposited. But if you are giving injection to a very thin person, or if you yourself is a very thin person, this may not be the right way. If the subcutaneous space thickness is less than 1 inch or if it's just 1 inch, it will be good if we give the injection at 45 degree angle so that the medicine or the insulin gets deposited only in the subcutaneous space. What is the problem otherwise? Mostly we will be depositing, depositing the medicine. Unless the insulin is getting deposited inside the subcutaneous space, we run the risk of pushing the medicine into muscle or into the even into the blood vessel. The problem with which is that the action will be potentiated by fast absorption of insulin and the patients will be at a higher risk of developing hypoglycemia. So this is about the site. Now, let us move into the actual procedure of giving injection. Before giving any kind of injection or before doing any invasive procedure, we will have to follow very strict 
thorough hand washing procedure. The six steps of hand washing must be maintained. Another video on hand washing will be soon coming to you. And after washing hands, again, as, as, uh, as per the WHO norms, it has to be given with blowed hands. Any invasive procedures may be given with blowed hands. But at home, we may not be going for that. But if you want, you may use a glove. Then we'll have to go for the side to which we are giving injection. The select be very clean in a round. The selected site must be cleaned with an alcohol swab in a swirl fashion. It should not be in a linear fashion. And after that, with a dry cotton kept in between the fingers, we will be bunching the skin up and with the insulin syringe, we will be giving the injection at 90 degree angles into the subcutaneous space. After injecting, we'll be slightly withdrawing so as to check or to counter check that no blood vessel has been uh, penetrated. And after that, we'll be depositing, depositing the injection in a swift manner. And after the injection, the needle will be withdrawn immediately. And with the dry cotton, we'll be simply sealing that site. There is no pressure or massage given to that location. And after that, if required, a small tape may be applied over but if given at home usually we do not go for that and we have to make sure that the sharps the cotton everything should be disposed appropriately but in case if you are using no weapon the same may be used but make sure that no two people use the very same insulin pen single person must be getting their own insulin pen even if they are using the same type of insulin. And also while giving injection or even preparing injection we will have to check about the amount of insulin that is withdrawn. The exact units must be taken. You are not the person or the patient is not the person to make their own assumption on how much insulin should be received. Some people might be going for sliding scales according to the doctor's order. But make sure that your doctor gives you the correct advice on the amount of
and the doctor will be suggesting you to take 10 units or 20 units according to your own disease condition. Make sure that you are using the very same insulin at the same concentration that the doctor has prescribed and at the same time make sure to consult with your doctor the kind of insulin syringe that you must be using to take this kind of injection, this injection at this particular concentration. There are 40 unit syringes available, there are 100 unit syringes available. One particular concentration at a different unit uh, injection. There are mathematical calculation available to tighter the dose but it will not be very easy for you to do. Therefore, make sure that you are using exactly the same syringe at the same unit as your doctor says. It may be different from person to person and also make sure that you check the expiry date of the ins uh, insulin vial and also the date at which you start that particular vial should be noted or should be labeled on the vial itself. Either you can write down or so make sure that you are labeling the date and the day at which you are starting with the particular vial and also it is quite advisable of you to maintain a diary in which you take your daily glucose levels or your uh, with the help of a glucometer or something and chart it down along with the units of insulin taken and this will be quite useful for the doctor when he checks you up the second time. The next video from RLG Home Healthcare is on preparation of insulin injection. For that, subscribe to our channel and if you have any comments or suggestions or if you want any particular topics, please tell us. We'll be happy to help you. Thank you.